Hmm. Okay, so we imported this SQ norm hmm? and we defined our data using it and generated this data, okay? So if you get the histogram plot of it, you will see it is skewed, right? Now, such skewed data, you can transform using log, okay? Suppose let us transform this one. Uh, just apply log, uh, have this data, right? So after you apply log and get this transformed data, let's see what happens to the distribution. See? This right skewed data after log transformation shows this distribution, which is very near to Gaussian, right? So this is the effect log does upon skewed data. So for some ML algorithms, those that can't uh, handle skewed data, log transformation comes handy in that situation, okay? This is log transformation and what else remains? Binning, okay. There was one binning I had mentioned in the last class. Huh? So binning to bin, you might have heard of this term, right? If you know histogram, you might be knowing the term bin. Or else if you know bar graph, you might have come across this term bin, right? So binning means, binning or feature binning. People call it feature binning to be specific. So what it does is it takes a column. Obviously, column with uh, numbers or values and place them into certain number of beans. And those beans will be defined by some ranges. Okay. So often binning helps introduce some meaningful features into the data. Like... Um, How will binning introduce new features? I mean, suppose you have a data with you, right? Let me show you using this one. A data of... Uh, certain cars, okay? Suppose you name the cars as A, B. Okay. 
CD. Let me just randomly name the cars this way. And the next column, suppose, shows its mileage. Hmm. Mileage. Oh, okay, let it be. Suppose, uh, let me define those mileage values to be some 52, 28, 26, 10, 14. 33, something like this. In some cases, a data scientist might be interested in dividing these mileage values into something like a range of values that will indicate a good mileage, a range of values that will indicate average mileage, a group of values that can indicate poor mileage. Hmm? So if you can introduce a range of values that can be called good, a range of values that can define the average mileage, a range of values that can define poor mileage. So you can have another column here, right? You can call it uh, efficiency. You can have one new column, one third column, that will tell the efficiency of these cars. Now, since it is 32, and those bin ranges depends upon the user. Hmm? They can define it. So for our case, suppose 32, 33, they are in the higher range, right? So we can uh, define a bin like between 30 to 40, if the mileage is between 30 to 40, so it is good. You can call them good, right? Their efficiency. And suppose from uh, thir between 30 to uh, 20, uh, it is average. So these will come under average, right? This, this, this. And this 10, suppose less than uh, 20 is poor. It will be called poor, the efficiency. So that way you can create one new feature with some other uh, information that might be appealing for some cases, okay? So helps this way. A meaningful feature out of the features already present in your data set. Fine? Is it clear? Can I get a quick yes, no? Yes, ma'am. Only, only so one. This is what? What about yes. yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Come again. I could not answer. No, madam. I'm just asking to all who are uh, answered the Please uh, voice it or uh, just chat. What is your uh, yes or no? Just put in the chat. That also welcome. Yes, yes. Uh, you people can put in the chat as well. Okay. A quick feedback encourages me. No? Otherwise, all thing looks dull. I hope it is understandable, right? So binning helps you create new meaningful features for the data set. And now again, this is a categorical feature, right? So you will again before uh, the ML models, machine learning models, you have to again encode these values, right? We have already seen. Now, now this is uh, this one. Who was that fellow who asked me label encoding? This, this I, here, I, in this case, you, you can use label encoding. Hmm. This is ordinal, right? Because it rates, it is a rank, it shows rank from poor to good. So you can do label encoding here. Hmm? Okay. Label encoding is preferred for such categorical variables. So this is uh, binning. And next is, what was the next thing? You, you can uh, try coding this on your own, okay? This binning one. Hmm? 
you take you create one data frame this way the way i have created huh? use some random values for some vehicles huh? define some mileage try to create bin you can use histogram na h i s t function okay next was if i correctly remember it is splitting it was a splitting huh? the last i think it is the last one the last feature engineering tool that i mentioned yes. splitting so splitting as the name suggests it will help you it will it, it will again help you uh, create new features huh? how means um, suppose if i give you some example one of the simplest will be this one suppose you have a data set that contains person's name in it okay and some attributes related to it let the person name is some i don't know what what name should i keep like some martin luther king huh? anything mk gandhi pranav prabin s any name huh? and suppose oh, in some case you wish to just have the first name of the person or the employee or the last name of the person or the employee for some reason so splitting will help in that case okay get it Uh, or let me take one example it is a small no? it's an, it's a small. let me take one small case uh, suppose df dot data frame define one data frame that contains names of persons let us define those names how do i remove this <laughs> let us just take these three names huh? any name so you have a data frame df huh? that contains these names and somehow for some case you wish to have only either the first names or the last names huh? Name of the time. Suppose I wish to extract the first names. So you have this option from the column names in our data frame DF for the string attribute. Split the values and map it using the lambda DA such that the final data frame will have those x values. Okay. 
which are in the first uh, position in the index zero. If everything is correct, let me name this one as DF first. So DF. So this way, hmm? so you could extract only the first names from the person's list. So splitting means splitting the variable variable values this way. Okay, this way you can create one new feature. Hmm? Sometimes, in some cases, it is useful to have the first name. Huh? If you wish to compare how many persons are there in your data with these first names and somehow you wish to work with them, it comes handy, right? So this is another feature engineering tool or technique available with us. Splitting, log transform, one hot encoding. And yesterday we uh, covered the outliers, right? Treated them as well. More uh, important feature engineering aspect uh, that you should have a look at. It is with regards to feature engineering of data time variables. Okay. So most of the time it happens that you have to have date or time information in some format. Let us get this example and see. Huh? For that you have this date time module. Python provides you date time module. You can import date. Suppose we create this data data frame, okay, using pd.data frame. So date is the column with these values. These are few date values. So pandas provide you these methods, okay. Let me just run it. Done. So if you wish to extract date, if you wish to extract year, you have this dt dot year. If you wish to extract month, you have dt dot month with you. Let's run this one. Even the day name you can have. I have named every whole oh, name. Fine, fine, fine. Let us look at the transformed data now. Hmm. See, you had only this date column with you, right? So now from that date column, you could extract the year, this year, you could extract the corresponding months, you could extract the day's name as well, okay? In some cases, if the need arise though, you have this option with you. This topic also comes under feature engineering. And what this feature engineering answers means, these are the few questions. Huh? There might be certain cases where you, you need to see. These are some few example questions listed out here. When are, when are certain items purchased most often? So you, you might be interested in getting that month, that year, or that day, whatever it is. So those cases, this feature engineering tool will help. So oh, this is all about feature engineering. Hmm?
up to this any 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 question anybody any question if not though i will quickly cover this it is related feature scaling okay there is something called feature scaling as well under which you have these two terms standardization and standardization okay so there might be cases when your data set has multiple features and those features span over varying degrees of magnitude mm -hmm. or different having different units or different ranges so in such cases the need arises huh? there is a need to scale the feature so that everything comes within a certain range so that is when the feature scaling comes into the picture mm -hmm. for many ml algorithms feature scaling has proved to be significantly improving the performance okay so you have two popular feature scaling techniques one is standardization and the other is normalization so standardization to is that z score mm -hmm. calculating the z score and transforming the original data values to the corresponding z values so these this technique this scaling technique is standardization that we have already seen in case of that outliers right last class we used z score to detect the presence of outliers in our data set but its standardization also helps you to scale the feature okay scale the values of the feature you remember what, what, how did you calculate the z value z is if x is your data value so you will subtract mean right and then divide it by the standard deviation this gives you the z score huh? actually what is happening here is all the original values are getting centered around the mean right when we do x minus mean means what all the data values are getting centered around the mean and you are dividing the values by the standard deviation that means the resulting z the new data z will have a distribution whose mean is zero and standard deviation is one right can i say you have a data set x it contains certain number of values all those values in x you are subtracting mean from it and all those values you are dividing by the standard deviation hmm? meaning what the resulting z will have mean zero right because you have already subtracted mean from x now the resulting z will be a distribution whose mean is zero and standard deviation is one so scaling is done right it's a scaling so this is one feature scaling aspect okay the other one is normalization so what normalization will do is it will limit all the data values in the range between 0 and 1 okay that is normalization so if i need to express normalization to let me call it x new or x normalized so normalized x means it is x minus uh, x mean divided by 
x max minus x mean. If you transform your data using this relation, you will again get a scaled data, x normalized, okay? You are normalizing using the minimum and the maximum of x. Can you see if you use this relation, all the values of x will get limited between zero and one, is it? When x is equal to x minimum, you will get zero. Hmm? When x is equal to x maximum, you will get one, right? And all the values will be between zero and one. That is how you get normalized data set, normalized data. Hmm? So these two as these two tools, the standardization and normalization. It helps you in cases when you have multiple features and all those features have varying degrees of magnitude. Meaning, for example, there are certain features that have values in kilometers and some features having uh, values in the range of suppose centimeters. It's a huge difference, right? So depending upon the condition, if you stand Hello, my voice is audible. Should approach one, okay?